been a long time since you have seen this homestead. We, uh, the last few videos you saw from the homestead were actually filmed, whew, back in like, I wanna say July. We were daily moving the animals, we were milking goats, um, we were preparing knowing we were going on vacation, which you saw in yesterday's video. Uh, so we were kind of finishing up our, our big summer push. And now we're after our summer vacation, we're into fall almost. I mean, it's a couple, maybe a couple weeks away, but it's starting to feel like fall. So I figured today I'll just do a nice little update, show you what's going on here. And we'll start with the raised beds because you haven't seen those in a hot minute. I made a video uh, years ago about being a lazy gardener and it's true I am a I'm a lazy gardener I don't like to garden I don't really enjoy it like a hobby like I do some other stuff uh, but I see the value in it especially with the kids so we did our raised beds this year and lazy style raised beds just putting in some transplants kind of letting them go and uh, we got a ton of food out of these raised beds you can see we have some beautiful sunflowers that was from my grandma she sent seeds the kids planted them and they're just gorgeous we got a lot of cherry tomatoes, tons of peppers, flowers. We even have out of this raised bed a Hubbard squash, which my son wants to make a, a pumpkin pie with that Hubbard squash. So um, from yesterday to maybe back in the week to today, we got two nice dozen of eggs. The chickens are molding right now, so it's harder to get a dozen of eggs. It takes a longer time. Um, but um, we're still getting nice dozens of eggs, so that's still a good sign. Just a ton of food for very little input, so that was really nice. We treated it like a kitchen garden, just collecting the, the stuff as we wanted to eat it. Uh, we've roasted tomatoes, we've had fresh tomatoes. Kay made pickles, my son made pickles. What are you making, bud? Pickles. Tell us about it. You know how a, uh, a cucumber turns into a pickle? How? You need to keep it in salty water for a while. And when you take it out, it's a salty pickle. Now you can do it not chopped up. You can do those mini cucumbers. They get small. You can, they keep the stems on those and then stuff like that. You can pickle radishes as well. My sister pickled radishes, her radishes. And pickling stuff for me is always better. Makes it better, makes it more salty. What are, where did these ingredients come from? Some of these ingredients, like my very large dill is from the raised bed. And the cucumbers are from the raised bed as well. Now we haven't tried um, pickling, like from scratch pickling my own cucumbers. I haven't ever pickled something, not really. I haven't been like a helper for it. So this would be a first time. I hope they turn out good for the first time. That's real product right there, farm fresh. It's what homesteading's all about. Living off the land, making your own food. And that right there is what you call homesteading. And that right there. That was some good uh, narration right there. Really, they did really good for a couple of beds that we just put transplants in and weeded, honestly, like maybe twice. Uh, I, when we were away, our, the person farm sitting was my mother-in-law. She did a great job farm sitting. It's nice to leave the farm to someone who knows how to farm. And she weeded our beds, so they're, they look good right now compared to what they looked before. Um, but yeah, I mean, just a ton of food with low level energy, low level maintenance. I like that kind of system on a homestead. 
low input, a lot of output. That's, that's thumbs up right there. So that is the raised bed update. A lot of food coming out of those three little raised beds. I love raised beds, sir. That's my kind of gardening. Now we're walking back. We're going to take a look at the goats. We'll see the cows and the dogs. So many people have been asking about the dogs. Figured I better get them in an update, but you're gonna be seeing a lot more of the dogs because I'm starting to do some big time dog training. Away. Oh, we got a light out in the barn. Huh. That's strange. The la last time you saw our farm system, we were doing daily moves with our livestock, our cows and our goats, pasturing them on our hill. We did not want to leave that for our farm sitter, my mother-in-law. That's way too much can go wrong for someone who's watching the farm. So what we did was we set up a very large pasture area over here with some good fencing and everything was barn central. So my mother-in-law could come to the barn and take care of everybody, check on everybody really quickly without having to do a ton of work. So we made it very easy and user friendly for our farm sitter. If you have a homestead or a farm and you're leaving it for someone to watch for a week, First off, they gotta know what they're doing. Uh, it's, we're blessed to have somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, and then you wanna make it easy, pretty simple. So right now, everything is pretty barn-centric. The chickens are in here, in the chicken room. And uh, as my son said, they're still laying a lot of eggs. The goats are out in our first paddock here. Hi, everybody, wow, hello, hello. Let's go see the goats. The goats we currently have moved to this paddock which is behind the barn. The goats have never been here. This is their first time in this paddock. Also they have access out the back to a big big pasture area. A lot of weeds, a lot of heavy browse for them in there. They've been enjoying that. We are not currently milking them. We were milking them right up to, right about before we went on vacation, and then we started weaning them off of our milking. And uh, the kids have been on them, milking them out, kept them milked out while we were away, so that was great. It's one of the benefits of kid sharing is it actually allows a person with dairy animals to take a break if you have it, if you, if you time it right. So we were able to leave. The kids kept the girls milked out, no problems there. We actually, we had enough of our milking experience. We got to do goat's milk. We got to actually make goat cheese. We didn't love the goat cheese. Uh, we tried a few different methods, but uh, we didn't love any of the, the products super. And this is what we've got so far. Our family loves goat cheese. Our kids, one of their favorite things to buy at Trader Joe's is that log of goat cheese that's like surrounded in blueberries. That's one of their favorite, like they'll go to Trader Joe's and that's what they want to get. And he's like soft. It's like a blank canvas. Yes, yeah, you taste the cheese, the goat cheese at the end. Yeah, it's, it's um. Yeah, it needs to be like on. Nice soft. consistency. Needs like herbs. And but it needs more than just... There's no salt or anything in that. That's just This is just goat's plain milk. goat's yeah. milk cheese. Yeah, I mean, it's a great blank slate. Nothing wrong with that. We didn't love the goat's milk compared to our Jersey cows, which is no shock to anyone who drinks Jersey cow milk. Jersey cow milk is incredibly rich in fat and uh, cream. Uh-oh. Goats. Oh, goats. Gizmo just escaped. And, uh, I'm sorry, there's like a huge machine over here working on the property. If you can't hear me, that's why. The goat milk, it held us over. Uh, it wasn't as good as Jersey milk, no shock there. Um, but it, it came at the right time. It held us over for what is about to happen, which we're gonna walk over here to see. 
and uh, leave this annoying loud machine. Let's go. They're in the back pasture. I'm not going to walk too far back there because uh, I think there's a storm coming and I don't want to. I had a dream last night I almost got struck by lightning, so let's not make that a uh, reality. <laughs> uh, our cows are back there, Ladybug and Luna, and we are in the month that our calving begins. So that means focusing on the cows, uh, we're going to be laying off our focus on our goats. We're probably going to dry the goats off completely. I, I don't think we'll keep milking the goats because, again, the product we're getting from them, while good for goat's milk, is not as good as the Jersey milk, and pretty soon we're going to be getting fresh Jersey milk. So as we transition, we'll slow down on goats, we will uptick on cows, and that means a big change for me on the homestead and what I'm doing, because as you saw in some of those videos, I was doing all of the goat milking myself. Me and my daughter were the goat milkers. Kay doesn't enjoy milking goats like she does cows, and, uh, with the new baby and everything, it just worked out where I was the one who did all the, the goat milking. But now we gotta get ready for these two because they're getting really big. They're getting ready for calving. Hey, girl. Come on, girl. They're getting huge. You can never tell a pregnant woman she's getting huge. We talked about that in that video. But it's okay to tell a pregnant cow she's getting huge. Look at Ladybug, she's getting so big. She looks like she's gonna pop. Boop. Luna too. Look at you girls. So Ladybug's gonna calve first. That'll be this month. So stay tuned for that. Um, Kay does most of the cow stuff. I'll be her assistant to the cow calving and the cow milking. That frees me up as we're winding down on goats. Kay's gonna be doing more with the cows. The change of seasons is bringing a new focus on for me here on the homestead. As many of you know, I am a hunter, an avid hunter, and uh, we like to raise our own meat. This year we raised zero of our own meat on this homestead. Um, our freezers are getting lower with meat, and so I'm gonna start to look to the woods for some meat. Uh, maybe one of these girls will have a, a, a bull and that could be meat for us if we would decide to go that route. That's a discussion for another time. Oh, hi. You came over to say hi, Luna. Flies still bugging you, hon? Oh, look at those flies, nasty flies. Let's say hi to Luna while we're here. There you go, Luna. I think I made Ladybug self-conscious about her size. She's hiding behind the tree. <laughs> Let's go say hi. Ladybug loves a good scratch. Hi, Ladybug. on bird dog training. We're currently working on, working on fetch. Hold. I'm training Poppy the fetch command. Some of you know I do some uh, bird hunt guiding in the PA area. Last year we did a little bit. We're gonna do more this year. Give. And I'm hoping to get her out because she is a beast of a retriever. I just need to work on her manners her uh, obedience level. She is a high drive dog, much more than bones. And so right now I'm starting with her with just the basic fetch command. I want her to not grab this until I say that word. 
And then when I say give, I want her to let go of it and let me have it. So right now, I don't want her to get it. Ah! I don't want her to grab it until I tell her to. I'm trying to teach the dog to fetch for me. I said it there, uh, not her. Ah! Fetch! Hold. 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 Now she should keep holding this until I say give. And then it should come out easy. Good girl. Good girl. So this is the most basic command I'm working with her at for the field. Um, she's done a lot of retrieving and bumper work already, but right now we're working on just teaching good manners. It's one thing to run and grab a ball and bring it back to you. If they treat that ball, a bird, the same way they treat that ball, it could be bad, if you, especially if you have clients who are paying you to have a nice, clean, retrieved bird. Fetch. Hold. One problem I see with her is this, this chewing she does. She shouldn't do that. She needs to have a nice, soft mouth. So I'm just gonna, uh, correct her. Give. Good girl. I like working on the milking stanchion because it's up high. It's easier to work with a dog on a uh, elevated platform. Uh, these training sessions are short and frequent. Ah, uh, no. And that's the way we like to do training with our dogs, short, frequent sessions. So I'm feeding them and I'm training them around the same time each day. Twice a day. Hey, good girl. And sometimes I sneak in a bonus training session. Oh. Now bones is another story entirely. Bones has uh, really, really good obedience. He has really good manners. What I'm working with Bones right now is just a reminder for the season of my hand commands over, over, back. So it's a bit of a refresher course. And he's not great in the field with overs and overs. Back he does okay with. So I'm trying to improve him before the season comes in. Let's go pup. Right now, I'm going to give two bumpers, one to either side of him, and tell him with my over command which bumper I want him to get. tricky one that's called a blind retrieve he didn't see me throw the bumper he was just working off of my commands and my hand signals to get him closer those are trickier and he did a really good job so I'm proud of bones for that he's doing good We're about to get a rainstorm here so my training session for the day is complete our barn chores are done uh, you may have noticed this strapped around me uh, it's time for me to start putting up my game cameras I have a whole stack of Moultrie game cameras they sent us last year and I'm going to start putting them up around the property. I'm going to get an idea of what predators are coming around. Fall predation is an uptick as food sources get less and less on the homestead. More predators start looking to the farm. Uh, predation, uh, fall seasons open up where you can actually hunt predators so we can lower the predator population around here. Bird season is already open, dove season is open, so I could start with the dogs uh, on doves. Pheasants coming in soon, deer season is gonna be picking up and I wanna get an idea of what kind of deer are on the property, where they're moving. Last year we had a lot of construction, that's gonna be different this year. So I'm going to be gearing now, I'm starting to focus on the field. I wanna get some meat in the freezers before the long winter. 
Kay is going to be transitioning into getting these dairy cows ready, calved, and we're gonna have that beautiful Jersey milk coming back in. We got our farm fresh eggs. We're getting the last little bit of scraps out of the garden. Our harvest season is kinda of coming to a conclusion here as we now look to the wild uh, for a couple more delicious wild harvests before winter sets in on the homestead. And honestly, I think we're ready for winter this year. It was a tiring year, we did a ton, and the new baby always uh, makes it a little extra work. And I think we're ready for some quiet, cool days in that winter to plan for next year and see what changes are coming to our homestead. I have a project I'm working on uh, for all you homestead dreamers to get started. So stay tuned for more news on that. What kind of questions do you have, those of you who are homestead dreamers or beginners, as to where to get started? Let me know in the comments below so I can keep making sure I tailor this project to help you. It's a free thing, it's not gonna cost any money, it's a, a course that's designed to help people get started homesteading. Uh, we're just helping, you know, uh, we have such a great audience here, so much support, and we're uh, trying to help you guys, those of you who haven't started yet, to, to make that first step. So hopefully we can get you in on it. All right, gotta beat the storm inside, let's go.